Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It's time to have a look at the rest of the suggestions past the developers for March of 2023. We need to have a look at the aviation stuff after having a look at the Harrier the other time. It's time to have a look at all the rest which are around. Let's get into them. Also, it should be mentioned before we get started, a few of these articles I've already covered in other videos, which is why um, you'll be able to see them there, basically. I'm not going to repeat them, uh, just because I'm not going to go over the same stuff twice. The first vehicle is the British Aerospace Sea Harrier FA2. Uh, this uh, one is a pretty simple one. It's an upgrade over the FRS-1, uh, which you may know about. The Sea Harrier FRS-1 entered service in 1978 and received its baptism of fire shortly after, during the Falklands War in 1982. During this conflict, the aircraft gained a reputation for being an effective fighter aircraft and quickly caught the imagination of many people and soon became a modern classic. By the late 80s, the British began to upgrade their FRS-1s to a higher standard in order to increase their combat effectiveness. This upgrade was originally known as the FRS-2, but the designation was quickly changed to FA-2. The Sea Harriers were refurbished and were provided with the newer, more advanced Blue Vixen radar and fire control system, thus allowing them to use the AIM-120 AMRAAM, making it the first British aircraft to have this capability. This combination gave the FA-2 a BVR capability, essentially allowing it to engage targets before they're visible to the naked eye. All these new systems required the aircraft to be slightly longer than its predecessor, with the FA-2 being 35 centimeters longer than the FRS-2. The most obvious difference is the larger, more rounded nose, which houses the Blue Vixen's array. The FA-2 also retained its AIM-9Ls, the aircraft's fighting edge that proved its mettle in the Falklands. The aircraft was also provided with the capability to carry twin Aden cannons underneath the aircraft in a pod, a standard feature on the Harrier family, as well as the BAE Sea Eagle anti-ship missile, the Alarm anti-radiation missile, and also various unguided iron bombs, thus widening the use of the Sea Harrier considerably. The aircraft also received two ANALE-40 countermeasure dispensers, as well as a Marconi Sky Guardian RWR, an improved nav attack system. Small changes were made to the wings as well, and the engine was changed to the Pegasus 106, a rebuild and refinement of the previous Pegasus 104 fitted to the FRS-1. The first FA-2s were 33 conversions of FRS-1s, with a further 18 new builds being delivered between 1995 and 98, with the last being delivered on the 24th of December 1998, as the last fully British Harrier. The next one is a Japanese plane, but I've got to say it's got one of the most ridiculous names I've ever read. This is the Mitsubishi Ki-46 3B plus C, or the Type 100 Commandant Reconnaissance Plane Model 3 Otsu Plus High. So, or Hey, depending on who you feel like. So, this one was a Japanese long-range high-altitude, high-speed strategic reconnaissance plane, which was used during the Asia-Pacific War. It had excellent high-altitude performance and speed. So, since 1944, they modified it into a interceptor. The Type 100 was designed to replace its predecessor, the Type 97, uh, which was also a recon plane, the Key 15, and the Type 97 was an excellent strategic recon plane. During the Second Chino-Japanese War, the Type 97 eluded a pursuit of enemy fighters by high-speed performance and also was very successful in a lot of operations. However, the IGA was not satisfied and started developing a new generation of recon plane after the Type 97 was adopted. The Key 46 project was started on the 27th of December 1936, and they required speci uh, specifications such as the uh, standard altitude should be between 4,000 to 6,000 meters, the maximum horizontal speed or the maximum overall speed should be 600 kilometers an hour at 4,000 meters, Cruise range should be about 6 hours at 4,000 meters, 
and also good maneuverability and stability, and also should be able to fly on one engine. The engines also had to be the HA-20 Otsu or the 25 or 26. Army side chief designer was Major Fujita, Major Tanaka and also engineer Ando and Mitsubishi um, also had Kubo Tomio and also Sugiyama, Mizuno and Kato uh, to support at uh, the helm. To reach uh, the planned speed with an air-cooled engine, they used a special design cowl um, which was designed by Professor Kawada Sanji at the Tokyo University. The wing type was the same as the Type 97, and to reduce air resistance, they shrunk the body front area and vertical tail fin, and all the gear would be fully uh, retractable. The first prototype uh, had its first flight in November 1939 at Kagamihara Airfield, and the test pilot, Major Fujita, uh, the speed was not reached to the planned one, it only got to 540 kilometers an hour, but it was still faster than all of the other planes that was around, the A6M, the Ki-43, and also Ki-45. So they adopted it and decided to go forward with it. Model 1 was equipped with the HA-26-1, but in March of 1941, they tested the HAR-102, an improved version of the 26, and the max speed reached 604 kilometers an hour. It was adopted as the Model 2. In that time, it was the fastest Japanese aircraft, but production was uh, therefore going well, and also it succeeded in many of its outings. Since May of 1942, they created the design for the Model 3. To improve performance, the engine was replaced with the HA-1122. Uh, the fuel tank increased, and the shape of the nose was changed, but this, uh, in these changes, the Model 3 got a very unique nose and also cockpit design. Since May of 44, some Key 46 2s were modified to intercept B-29s. They mounted two 20mm guns in the nose and also removed the front fuel tank and recon equipment. By this change, shape of the nose was also greatly changed. The prototype was completed in a month and it was named the Model 3 Otsu, uh, or the Key 46 3 Otsu. Finally, 75 planes were modified. Additionally, since July of 44, they removed the rear seat and installed a 37mm autocannon. This variant was called the Model 3 Otsu Hei. And finally, 15 planes were modified. Furthermore, in September of 44, they added a 50kg Tadan. It was an anti-aircraft cluster bomb, and 50 planes were equipped with it. And after the Key 46 3 Otsu series was developed, initial models was renamed to the Model Co. In later times, they developed the Model 4 with a turbocharger. The prototype was completed in February of 44, and the max speed got up to 630 kilometers an hour. It was the fastest military aircraft that was in service, um, and also it generally did pretty well. So overall, um, the vehicle itself has a lot to it. Uh, they also added not just the 20 millimeters in the front, you also had a Schrag Music HO204, which was in the center of the vehicle as well. The AIDC FCK1A MLU is the new vehicle. This is the Air Indigenous Defense Company's idea um, to be the successor and also implementation of the FCK1CD Xiang Sheng plan uh, with some minor changes. The two prototypes of the Shang Shen plan continued testing until 2009, when the AIDC was awarded the equivalent of $500 million to upgrade 71 of their existing FCK-1A fighters. Not all of the upgrades of their Shang Shen plan were adapted but the, by the government, however in the new plan, which was known as Xiang Chan, was put into effect. The main difference between the plans was that the conformal fuel tanks and subsequently slightly altered fuselage were not installed on the fighters. Everything else, including upgraded avionics, enhanced electronic countermeasures, increased TC-2 missile capacity, and also integration of the TC-2A anti-radiation missile and Wan Qian cruise missiles were kept and installed. Between 2014 and 17, a further 56 FCK fighters were upgraded to the new MLU standard in the Xiangchan 2 plan. 
bringing the total amount of upgraded fighters to 127. The upgraded fighters are equipped to the 3rd Tactical Fighting Wing in the Taichung and the 1st Tactical Fighting Wing in Tainan. These fighters' main purpose, if war was to ever break out between China and Taiwan, are to be one of the first to engage PLA fighters at range with their TC-2 missiles, engage enemy warships with the Xiong Feng missiles, and destroy or suppress air bases in China with the Wang Chen cruise missiles. Since, as defense fighters, they have limited performance and mainly take on intermediate uh, to long-range roles uh, for the missile usage. For now, they mainly serve in practice, patrol and interception slash shadowing roles whenever PLA aircraft enter Taiwanese airspace. The upgraded fighters initially became known as the FCK-1AB MLU because they were improved from the original FCK-1A but didn't have all the improvements of the SCK-1C program. In recent years, however, it seems the AIDC no longer discerns between the MLU and CD and both are used interchangeably to describe the upgraded FCK fighters. For Italy, we have the Fiat BRG. This was an experimental heavy bomber, which was first flown in 1930. It was a high-wing trimotor monoplane with a strut-based wing, one engine on the nose, and one on each side of the fuselage, and wide-track fixed landing gear. The defensive armament consisted of four Breda Safat 7.7mm machine guns in single mount in a dorsal turret and also ventral and waist positions. The ventral gun mount was separated from the rest of the crew compartment and access to a crawlway. After evaluation, the prototype was assigned to an experimental heavy bomber squadron, but unfortunately, it never entered production. The vehicle could carry up to 2,000 kilos of bombs. The next one is for France, and it's the Loire Newport LN10. Uh, this was a combat reconnaissance seaplane, which also had access to some of the features including the fact it was a long-range, multi-sighted, twin-engine, torpedo reconnaissance seaplane with the W-shaped gull wing. It uh, was made of all metal, uh, with stressed steel skin. It had access to six crew members, and also, uh, at the same time, was run by the Gnome Rhone 14Rs, with 1,600 horsepower each. Uh, the maximum speed of this vehicle is 430 kilometers an hour. It has two 7.5mm Darn machine guns on it in flexible mounts and then also one 20mm Hispano Sousa in a dorsal turret. It could also carry up to two torpedoes or 1250 kilos of bombs. The last vehicle is the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation CA-27 Sabre Mark 32. Um, this is a modified version of the F-86 series produced in Australia. The aircraft's engine has been replaced by a Rolls-Royce Avon RA26 turbojet engine with far superior thrust from the General Electronics J47G27, which was used on the F86F. So its top speed is equal to or better than the Canada Sabre Mark VI. Also, the Sabre has changed its armament from six M350 cals to two Aden 30 millimeters so it technically would have more firepower. Maybe not as much as the 20mm Sabres, but probably more than the 50s, but it depends on who you ask, and in-game, maybe not to, uh, maybe not exactly. The RAAF realised in late 1949 that it needed to replace its first jet, the Vampire, with a more modern aircraft. The original plan was to introduce the American F-86 Sabre, but due to the Korean War, the US was unable to deliver the Sabre to Australia. As a result, the RAAF purchased the Meteor from the United Kingdom. The Australian government at the time was inclined toward the British and wanted to license produce aircraft designed in the UK by the Australian CSC. Many proposals were made at the time, including the Hawker Hunter, but the development period was too long and it was decided that the RAAF would produce the F-86 series under license. At the time, the CAC saw good potential in the more powerful Rolls-Royce Avon Axial Flow turbojet combination, and in 1951, the government began designing and developing a new fighter base off the F-86F. 
Of course, the new engine could not be pressed directly from the F86F, so it was necessary to deepen the front of the fuselage to increase intake airflow and move the engine mounts further aft to maintain the center of gravity. The final design was fatter than the regular F86. The first prototype was called the CA26 and was delivered in August of 1953. A year later, deliveries of production aircraft, named the CA27 Mark 30, began. A total of 22 Mark 30s were built. Deliveries of the next version, the Mark 31, began in July of 1955, and 20 were delivered by September of 1956. The major change in this model was the replacement of the original wing with a so-called 6-3 wing. The wing slats, which tended to deploy asymmetrically when rolling at high altitude, were deleted. The wing strings were extended 6 inches at the root and 3 inches at the tip, and a wing railing was incorporated. Again, based on the experience from Korea, the new wings improved performance at high altitude and also high Mach numbers. In addition, the fuel capacity of the leading edge was increased on later models. Most Mark 30s were converted to Mark 31s when they came undergoing extensive maintenance. The final model was the Mark 32, first delivered in September of 56, with a total of 69 aircraft produced in three batches, the last being delivered at the end of 1961. These aircraft had two additional hardpoints under both wings with loading supplies. This allowed them to carry bombs, extra tanks, and then later M9B sidewinders. The newly adopted Avon RA26 engine was also redesigned with improved airflow to prevent surging during gunfire. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Millie Draper, Juan the Panda, Nick R. Kupila, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie B. Young, Peter Grayling, Jerry Provolt, Barine, Alan Hacker, Sem Arslan, Uncle Bean, Derek R., and Lafouche for supporting the channel.